at a pineapple farm in the Yewan North local government area in Ogun State. A pineapple sucker has just produced a record-breaking 21 pineapples. Yes, you heard right. I'm going to be reacting to this video. It was sent to me to a professor by a professor client of mine. Um, and my interest in it, we, beyond the fact that, of course, I support farm business owners, my interest in it stems from the fact that I'm heavily invested in the uh, idea of using a kind of value addition to pineapples, you know. For instance, some of you may know from following my work that I, in Cotonou, I began producing a drink using pineapple peels. So this is something I have a lot of passion for. So when I saw this video, um, I was excited and I watched it. But I got angry as I listened more and more to what they were saying. And I'll explain to you as we go through it. Um, I'll, I'll explain to you why I'm not happy with the things that were said, the thinking that was reflected in the discussion. But let me first of all let you listen to it and then I'll comment as, I, as we go along. All right. Did you know that one pineapple plant can only produce one fruit in its lifetime? In some rare instances, pineapple plants have produced two fruits, but there is no known record of more than that until now. At a pineapple farm in the Yewan North local government area in Ogun State, a pineapple sucker has just produced a record-breaking 21 pineapples. Yes, you heard right. Here we have 300 acres of uh, pineapple plantation and that is the reason why it is called first massive achiever pineapple republic now we have been cultivating pineapple but something strange something mysterious just occur in our farm every farmer know every uh, pineapple farmer knows and understand knows and understand that a soccer of pineapple can only give back to one fruit but amazingly we discover what has never happened in the history of the world, that a soccer in our pineapple plantation gave birth to nine fruits. Then we have conjoined twins. The conjoined twins on a particular one up to 12. If you had nine plus 12, that is how, how many? That is 21. That is 21. It is beyond human imagination. No, it is not genetically modified. It just happened anything that is mysterious you cannot just explain how it happens now um at this point i i have to just say something here because the the what the, this is the first thing that began to upset me this gentleman i have no problems with anybody um, but i i take objection to the way we always try to mystify and that's the word again you know make things look uh, it, it prevents us from using the intellect that the creator has gifted us listen to him somebody was asking him if there was some genetic modification done you can see his response he said no it was not genetic genetic modification it's just mysterious something that cannot be explained and you know the attitude is more like this is some kind of divine thing this is the way our people go you will see um, news reports of people who have achieved amazing feats in, with limited resources in different parts of the world um, or, or invented something that was literally thought impossible decades before. We've had so many instances like that. And the minute those images or videos appear in the Nigerian social space, next thing you begin to hear is this wonderful God, this glorious God. Please understand what I'm saying. I am not saying one should not give glory to the Creator in line with your beliefs. I am saying that People do that in a manner that tends to be directed at, uh, designed to explain away the exceptional intellectual effort and exertion that the person has invested in achieving that result and outcome. They tend to just, they, it's the same way they go about saying grace, grace, grace to everything, every um, report of achievement, exceptional achievement they hear. And it's affecting us in agriculture. This is an area, agriculture is an endeavor in which a lot of innovation and inventiveness is required. We are having challenges improving our agriculture like the Israelis have done. Look at what the Israelis are achieving with literally nothing on ground. That country is limited in every sense of the world. And yet, agriculturally, they are superior to, to us many times over because they do not sit down and just um, keep talking about, you know, um, with, with all this excessive emphasis on 
a mischief, myst mysterious stuff happening and all of that. Oh, it's mysterious. Nobody can understand it. It has never happened before. You have to sit down and analyze it. Investigate it. The reason why we know so much about snakes today is because white people, black people didn't do it. White people go and check all the people that were involved in all the work on the various varieties of snakes, all the stuff we have about snakes, go to the encyclopedia. The things we know about snakes and other dangerous animals today, a lot of it is the result of effort by the white people. Because they are willing to sit down and ask questions. They don't just sit down and look at something and say, oh, this thing is there, one spirit is directing it. They want to get to the root of it. Because we are spirits ourselves and we are products of the, uh, the we are the handwork of the creator. Within us, we have a lot of power that is like being suppressed because we tend to dwell too much on uh, on uh, imaginary mysteries. You know, these are things that can be explained by science. We have heard of mutation before, and there are examples of mutants even in human form. When I say mutant, people that have basically a mutation is something that's it's an aberration. It's a it's a deviation from normal for a variety of reasons. Some kind, something might trigger it in the process of development. All right, I'll give you a good example. Fact. Uh, so I decided to just look for the book. I still had my an old copy. It's a bit worn, um, worn out, but the photo is still very clear there. You can see it on your screen. What I've done is to also uh, reproduce a section of the text that was made, uh, used to refer to it. And you can see the uh, explanation given there, or the attempt anyway, at explaining what happened to that bird. Um, basically, the, the, the understanding or the assumption, preliminary anyway, is that it, there were some recessive genes were responsible for that. So this has to do more with genetics. And that's ultimately where most of these things will fall, between uh, lethal genes and recessive genes and stuff like that. Uh, this was something we studied way back. But these are things that are rooted in science. And that's where one would expect we'll focus our energies rather than saying, oh, it's mysterious and things like that. So this is just an example. There's a woman somewhere, that, a woman or man, I can't remember, that has two heads, you know, joined to one body. Uh, there are people who have all kinds of funny um, modifications that happened to them when they were, they came into the world, you know, that they were growing up, as they were developing, they just kind of, quote unquote, mutated. So there are scientific explanations for this thing. It's not like one spirit came and twisted their bodies or twisted their necks when they were coming out from their mothers and things like that. These are things that science has been able to explain. The thing, when a new one happens, it's only for science to go in and research it and, and understand why it happened and then see whether it might be beneficial to replicate or reproduce that kind of thing. You know, which is where, uh, maybe, maybe I should just stop here and then continue the video. Let's get to the, to the place where I want to stop or even the end. But I think a lot of us would have seen this. I believe it's a viral video. But let me just let it go on. Ahead of the U.S.-Nigeria Investment Summit starting on Friday, September 17th, farmers are speaking out as they allege applying to attend, but being denied visas for this cause. For U.S.-Nigeria uh, Investment Summit, unfortunately, we are denied visa to attend that summit that's supposed to come up 17 and 18 of this particular month. We have something to say to the world because we wanted them to investigate what is actually responsible for this. If there is any way... Okay, look at that. God, this gives me a headache all the time. Now, I've talked about the fact that science can explain it. Now, the question is, okay, where is science, what is going to be the location where this investigation will happen? Who is going to be responsible? Who is going to take responsibility for it? Now, this is the place, this is an example of what annoys me again. I've talked repeatedly about the fact that our education system is dead. People in... Nigeria in particular seem to go to school just because they want to put it on record or have it on record that they've been to school, they've got an education, they got a degree. We do not believe in applying whatever it is we learn. With that way, when we go into the place, we sit, literally just shut down our brains and just, just mechanically go through the school system. This is the reason why when we graduate, you see a person who is a graduate of mechanical engineering, cannot even fix any mechanical device cannot invent anything then you see little boys in the east mostly in the east they're the ones that are inventing building cars you know manually doing things and creating uh, mechanical and electronic marvels building solar powered things and all that 
these are boys that have no form of formal education at all yet they invent and create with 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 such amazing um, dexterity while the ones that went to school are, are wearing ties and going up and down rather than going to inventing and you know this brand these young ones in, in in the east most of these eastern boys these creative inventive boys don't get the support to to to, to develop their talents like that but you now find all these ones that went to formal education study mechanical engineering chemical engineering all these engineer 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 they can't create anything they can't invent anything all these ones that study microbiology zoology all this biology they don't know how to do anything other than to to, to just make noise uh, i'm a biologist i'm a zoologist but they cannot practice i'm a researcher and so and so you cannot do research even if they give you a grant you eat up the money for the grant you won't do the research that's why these people you see because they are lost look at them saying that oh they wanted to take it to you know they want them to help them investigate so you want to take what has happened on your farm in your country you now want to go to another country that has not had the experience and ask them to use their research experience to help you investigate and find out why your pineapples decided pineapple decided to multi fruit you don't want to do anything you don't believe you can do anything it's shameful that in 2021 we have farm ceos that are thinking like this but or farm um managers and farm operators that are thinking like this but it is not their fault why i say it's not their fault is that first of all we do not even have i have a paper the uh oh, that talks about yeah right of id that talks about the fact that um the extension services is literally dead i think there was some, something said in the news about uh, the extension system in nigeria being completely comatose and it's a ref that it's a reflection of that fact that these people are talking the way they are because if they had if nigeria had a robust extension services um in place those extension agents would have been in touch with these people one two those extension agents would be the one that would know how to reach out to research institutes and researchers and scientists that will help and i assure you we have people with black skins in black africa who can do the research and investigate it and probably collaborate and liaise with minds in other parts of the developed world if they need to but who themselves are respected by the people in the developed world because they are the ones even running some of the institutes in the developed world for your information in case you do not know i do believe a lot of a lot of, of us know that there are many nigerians who are holding huge powerful and very relevant positions in research and uh, science in many many developed societies these are people that we could tap from their knowledge and expertise but we don't have to go running to the developed world telling them to come and help us investigate and research and find out why a fruit on our farm it's it's an admission of our incompetence a shameless a very shameful thing and it's a dream it bothers me a lot because um, it means that in 2021 we still are not understanding the fact that we need to look inwards and become the one that originate the solutions that are unique to us there's something called the iks indigenous knowledge systems this is an opportunity for this yet another opportunity for us to go and sit down and say look we can literally become the world's experts the world's authority on pineapple multi-fruiting this has never happened anywhere else in the world let's see what we can learn about this let's be the first to talk to the world let's speak authoritatively about this development to the world let's tell let's try and study what was the circumstance what are this the, the what was the conditions in the soil the nature of the soccer we use what what was the situation in the environment that created this unusual um, development that's what we should be looking at this they, they are supposed to be speaking authoritatively instead they're saying mysterious 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 this unwillingness the complete unwillingness to do any thinking any to apply any intellectual effort to understanding the occurrence that has taking place they do not wish to do they just want somebody else to do the thinking but tell them now they want to send all their kids to school they want to make him get a master's but at the end of the day they still want to run down to the white man to ask him to help them think about why they are expanding it makes no sense what is the point of all the universities we have in nigeria if we cannot reach out to any of our scientists here locally and get them to take a look at this we have all sorts of research institutes we didn't call them all we're saying is all of us want to go to to one conference abroad and tell them to come and help you investigate why it's an admission of 
total incompetence and it's inexcusable but like i said it's not their fault they have no support from the system the government has not provided the extension services provided the extension services so they don't even know that they're supposed to be thinking like that i have written several papers in which i said farmers are supposed to on their own farms set aside some sections of the farm where they'll be doing their own internal r d and stop waiting for researchers from anywhere in the world to do things for them they should come to a point where they can even come and begin to lecture the entire world lecture, lecture industry about latest things they are doing on their farms and why they're getting results they're getting like for instance this pineapple multi-footing their experience you know the pineapple plant for this my understanding is only capable of producing between one to three fruits in its lifetime it's supposed to be a perennial crop it grows i think i think i can't remember how many months that i think uh, is it 24 months or something like that and the point is at any point in time it can only produce one fruit but the fruit is actually a collection of flowers it's like a kind of um, fluorescence all right so all they fuse together these flowers fuse together to make the pineapple fruit that is the way the normal ananas komosus or whatever that's it the uh, specific name now that's the way it's supposed to fruit normally so this is an aberration the thing is the aberration is not like one genie or one spirit or one demon came and jumped into the fruit and then made it to multi fruit something happened to this particular plant if we are so 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 sure that um uh, how do I put it now? We, we, instead of running up to one developed country to start shouting you should come and do what we should do is sit down and look at it and try and study it there were people there was somebody that put it into the soil somebody was there tending to it and all that what did they notice what is peculiar to it look around it dig into the soil around it take samples do something don't just put your brain on in a freezer and then just expect somebody else to come and help you do the thinking it's so sad to see this happening but again it's a reflection of this fact that the education system here is dead it's not it's not you see it's not practice practice oriented it's all theory it's just book knowledge there's no effort made to teach the learners how to be to practically apply what they learn in school and that's why the situation is this way we can't afford to continue like that let me just continue see if there's any more we can use this day there can be genetic modification whereby pineapple farmers can be harvesting three four five on a soccer because this is very strange you know, it's very disappointing. We've been planning for our group to attend the um, the U.S. Nigerian Investment Summit since March of this year, and we planned very well to be there. It's unfortunate that they didn't see the value of us being there and denied all of our attendees to participate. We are trying to be the voice for farmers of Nigeria, and you see what we can produce. So it's very, very unfortunate and very disheartening to to have that happen to us. You know, we've done news articles in the past and pleading for the government to recognize us and to help the young farmers of Nigeria. Because, you know, as Nigeria is a nation, uh, unemployment is very, very high and uh, there's always going to be work with the farmers. We need to feed our nation. We need to. Well, I think I'm going to end the video there. Maybe I'll put a link in the description to see if I can put it in my um, cloud folder so you can download the. Video, but I do believe it's a viral video. You will probably find it somewhere on the web. Maybe Arise News. Yeah, you go to their um, channel or so. Okay, but um, let me just end by saying this: what this lady is saying here, uh, she she eventually mentioned that she will be attending that uh, investment summit. My argument is that why do why do the entire group have to travel to the USA? Because they want to go and what voice? One person can speak for the entire group. What are they going to say as individuals that one person cannot? Can just summarize and put put across the 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 summit there they're going to people from all all over the place must they go to america in order to 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 put put their voice out put your th thoughts together in a document let somebody represent you and make whatever case you want to make but i still don't see any reason why you have to make the going to a developed society like a, a, a pilgrimage to mecca in order to have people uh, understand what you need or what you think you want to be able to do with your own uh, farming in a, in a place like nigeria if anything, we should be telling the world to come and take a look at what we're doing here that's producing this kind of pineapple fruit and you better come and learn from us. So we should actually invest in trying to come up with some idea, concrete idea of what exactly led to the occurrence and probably see if we can even replicate it on our own. We have people who have gotten degrees, masters, PhD levels in this field of agronomy, animal science, all these agriculture, agriculture fields, some of them are experts in different parts of the world. Why can't we tap into that expertise? We have research institutes right here in Nigeria where there are 
scientists who specialize in crops why can't we talk to them and ask them what do they know about this water do they know of any similar occurrences with other crops could there be any similarities could there be any lessons that could be learned or lessons taken from it can they possibly even help you find a way to maybe uh, uh, get to the root of it and replicate the, the results and see if it's going to be beneficial to do so on a large scale why can't we look in once and talk among our own experts why don't we respect our own experts i think that's the problem we do not respect ourselves enough to know that we can look in once and solve our own problems or at least get a good understanding of what the problem is and what the solution should be before we begin jumping out and saying we're going to other people nothing stops us from acknowledging the expertise superior expertise of others but for god's sake let's at least get a grip of what the actual problem is you know understand the, the problem be able to articulate it uh, correctly and then even investigate to a great extent what needs to be done before you begin to run out to other people you don't you just our people we have this we just want them to do our own thinking for us you know i have a completely different disposition and that's why i told people by the time i launched my farm business support center formerly in Benin republic people are going to be shocked by what we're going to be doing but funny enough funny enough already there are people who are doing things the way i'm saying it should be done if you go to the uh, port novo uh, facility of the songai integrated uh, farm farming center there by uh, what's his name now father and zamujo i mean they do a lot of st stuff like what i'm saying there they are literally a, a renowned center for innovation in um, uh, organic farming and some the things they are doing is something that the people are coming from diff different parts of the world to witness and to learn from so it's not like it's not even possible funny enough that man is doing it and there are a lot of opportunities to go there and learn i would imagine that we would even want to even talk to someone like him he might even know of experts who are black skin who are african who are here in africa who can help this farm with this problem understanding what's happening funny enough he also um, um produces pineapple on his on his uh, in his center there so this might be of interest to him because they are a heavy pineapple producing nation uh, Benin republic so what are we talking about rather than reach out to some guy which is a renowned international center you are busy talking about going to some uh, investment forum come on what is wrong with us just talking about going somewhere to show them and tell them to go and think for you and they come back and tell you are you i mean are you going to pay them to do that for you if they do it at all they will be doing it with the objective of seeing how they can be if the pineapple food was something that was growing easily in, in, in temperate crop um, climate you think this gives people come and ask you all these uh, i mean i think it's just because it's a tropical crop if not men they will do it for themselves not for you why do you want them to do it what, what's what's wrong with us the the with the mentality of entitlement is is mind-boggling but hey what do i know anyway but if it sounded like i, I was ranting yes that was my intention I, I just i'm tired of hearing things like this we don't organize our own conferences for the rest of the world to come and learn from us we instead keep running to other people's conferences and it, we don't know how how much it, it proves that we are incompetent then tomorrow we want to be taken seriously how will you get taken seriously when you don't take your own self seriously you have no respect for yourselves and that's the problem that's the reason why agriculturally we're backward as a nation till today and until we change it our mindset must change the way we think about solving our problem must change we must stop looking at what we must begin to look inwards the people that are going to our schools to learn agriculture must begin to learn what is going to make them useful to help in our industry grow listen at the end of the day stop talking about government government bringing money government bringing investment it's nonsense nollywood is nollywood today and known globally because us and stakeholders looked inwards and began to do things for themselves i continue to say it i've said it before in many of my write-ups farm business owners need to forget about government and start marketing themselves packaging themselves to be marketing themselves and marketing their needs to industry to private owners of businesses that will benefit from value addition to farm output you've got to connect with people that need you to do well there are industries that are using farm output look at the practitioners or uh, the, the stakeholders in those industries connect with them by learning how to market yourself look the, the premiership is successful because the premiership has a marketing arm that promotes the brand internationally making it attractive for investors to bring their money in and choose to buy clubs and all of that they're not stupid they know what they're doing we've got to do the same thing the farm look farmers got to come together under whatever umbrella they like decide to they want to do it and learn to be open-minded in working with collaborating with one another to grow the industry 
so that it can be attractive to private investors. Forget about the government. It's a waste of time. Nollywood did not go after the government. The government is going after Nollywood when Nollywood has made itself profitable and attractive. Then the government wants to be a part of it. But Nollywood, first of all, looked in once and solved its own problem. That is the way uh, the agricultural industry has to behave if we're going to get any progress. Until then, we're just going to keep there, keep complaining day in, day out, and we don't get any, uh, any mileage. All right, I hope this is useful. Uh, if you want to get across to me, my name is Tao Shinagbari. You can use the contact details on your screen.